even the people that you're following on social media that you look up to that are leaders have meh kind of days the biggest thing to do to break out of those things is realizing the difference between having like a meh moment or even day and then letting that turn into a pattern letting that turn into a week letting that turn into a month you're using your visualization and your imagination all the time whether you think you are or you don't think you are because that enemy in your brain is beating you up constantly with negative imaginations false mental rehearsals and so we have to take those things captive put them in the distance and renew our mind with things that are true Hey everybody, Coach Megan here. Welcome to the Powerhouse Podcast. And we're going to be talking about mindset today, specifically the secret to breaking through mental plateaus. It's the beginning of the year. We're all setting new goals. We're all breaking our word on new goals already. For <laughs> I can I get an amen? And I, I know how it feels. I really do. You know, we, we're having company meetings. We're having quarterly reviews. We're having annual reviews, goal setting, all these things, even for my companies. And I'm excited to share soon some other new developments in uh, my husband and I's lives that we'll share publicly soon that are very exciting. So I get it. And I want to let you know that even today on the day that I'm recording this, I woke up just kind of feeling meh, you know, and, and to be honest, that doesn't happen to me very often at all. I was laying down on the couch, not feeling very well, working through some DMs and stuff because Powerhouse gets a ton of DMs every day. And, you know, I'm doing my thing and setting appointments and and whatever and talking to people. And my husband was like, what's wrong? And I was like, man, babe, I just feel kind of meh today. I just, I don't know what it is. Like, it's actually pretty nice out. You know, it's, it's Wednesday today. Like, it's not like a Monday or anything, you know, and just there's really no rhyme or reason. And, and so I want to talk about that today. First and foremost, that even the people that you're following on social media that you look up to that are leaders have meh kind of days. And the biggest thing to do to break out of those things is, well, I have four different things we're going to be talking about today. But first and foremost is realizing the difference between having like a meh moment or even day and then letting that turn into a pattern, letting that turn into a week, letting that turn into a month or or certainly not only not reaching your goals, but now retrogressing and you're putting on weight or you are not showing up to your coaching calls or you're breaking your agreement with your own word frequently, right? Those are different things than just having like a meh kind of a day, right? So I even struggle with that because you can ask my team, like I am on all the time. Like I do not have off days. It's not in my nature. As an Enneagram 8, I just, I have extra batteries reserves for life. Like that's just the way that God made me. And then on top of that, having ADHD, I've learned how to work with it really, really well, to be honest, right? And and part of that, I mean, this is a word for you guys, is sticking to your routine and why I stick to my routine. And guess what I didn't do today? (laughs) Have any routine. I woke up super late. I didn't get in the word in the morning. Coffee smelled terrible to me for some reason. You know, I didn't drink my coffee, like nothing about my normal first hour of my day was normal. And so because of that, I was already, the high achiever in me, in all of us, was already condemning myself, telling me you're behind and you're having a bad day. And, you know, it was, it's been hard for me just today to separate myself from the achievements, right? When you achieve, you're good. When you don't achieve, you're bad, right? And a lot of us have felt that way. I know a lot of you guys feel that way because I hear that in our sessions all the time. So I want to let you know that that's not true. That if you never did another thing for another person, if you never achieved another thing, if you never got another A on a test or a promotion, you'd still be loved, you'd still be accepted, you'd still be, you know, right where you need to be. And today I just had to give myself grace if I'm being completely honest. Even I I have a million things to do, but I was like, you know what, we're going to march upstairs, we're going to make some podcasts because there's actually a ton of learning moments and sometimes my best content comes from when I'm in the thick of it because that helps me relate to you guys, right? Because sometimes the problems that I'm coaching on, I really have to dig back into my brain where I'm like, man, what was it like to deal with that? Because some of you guys are where I was 10 years ago, right? And for some of you guys, it's more recent. And so when I go through just little little bouts like this or days like this, I'm like, I am a human, you know? And my team's like, she is a human because it just doesn't happen very often. And 
I want to encourage you in that not to say, oh, look how amazing and perfect I am because I'm not at all. But I used to have way more worse days, right? You guys know my story. When I was 19, I couldn't even look in the mirror without crying. And I've built this up to being able to have, you know, some down moments rather than down entire days because I know what to do. I know how to respond. And so for you, I just have four things today that I really wanted to encourage you with that if you're going through a plateau of some kind, could be physical, could be mental, you know, it starts with the mental, which affects the physical typically. But here's just a quick strategy, okay? So I want you to like see this obstacle in your mind and I'm going to be practicing what I preach and doing this right now, even with myself, okay? So... See the obstacle in your mind. If you're not driving, close your eyes. Or if you're not walking across campus, please don't run into a trash can or something. (laughs) I want you to think about the obstacle and see it in your mind, okay? So I work with business owners. Maybe for them, it's like hearing the word no on in a sales situation, okay? I work with moms. Maybe it's your kid telling you off and feeling like you're a bad mom because you can't control the situation. Or I have a lot of moms with babies, right? And they're just like super tired all the time. (laughs) And they feel like they're a bad mom because they can't get their kid to sleep through the night when really it's like, hey, it's just a baby. You know, that's what babies do. Maybe for you, it's replaying something in your head where you've got this local coming up that you lost last year and you had a you had a negative experience and now you really want to win it this year, but your mind's playing tricks on you to see, well, you lost last year, so what makes you think you could win this year, right? That's stupid kind of a thing. Just stupid lies, right? So the first step is noticing how you feel, okay? Does it make you feel scared? Does it make you feel frightful, like you want to fly away? Does it make you frustrated, angry? What What would you call that emotion, that you're describing right now, that you're feeling, okay? For me, I think it's frustration. I think it's disappointment too. Like I hold myself to a pretty much perfect standard sometimes where I'm like, Megan, you wrote 17 things on your to-do list. And even though you cannot warp time, you better get it done. You know, (laughs) that's literally what my brain says sometimes. It's like, we'll just invent time real quick, figure it out, you know? And uh, that's not the way that it works. So that's a fun concept to work through in my brain. And that's why morning routines are so important, right? To pour into my spirit and be like, you're good. That's not the truth. All that. Okay, so what's the emotion? Now, the next thing that you're going to do is you're going to make the picture smaller in your brain. Okay, I'm going to make the picture smaller in my brain. The picture of that obstacle, that thing that I'm working through, we're going to make it smaller. We're not going to let it overwhelm us. We're going to make it smaller, 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 smaller. Okay. Now the second thing that you're going to do is you're going to put it farther away in the distance, throw that obstacle, chuck it super far away. Okay. And now the third thing I want you to do is to make it dark, dull, and showing no color. Take all the color out of it, make it dark and dull. That takes the power away from it. Okay. So it's small, it's in the distance, you can barely see it, make it dark, dull, and no color, colorless. Okay, now number four, notice how you feel. Do you feel a little bit lighter? Do you feel a little bit less frustrated, less overwhelmed, less frightful, less scared? Okay, now what we want to do is we want to fill our bucket back up. So now it's the time to visualize the outcome that you want. So visualize yourself winning the pageant, not tripping in your evening gown. Yourself with the body of your dreams, absolutely slaying the swimsuit, okay? Whatever the opposite of that obstacle is, I want you to visualize the outcome that you actually want. Now, I want you to make that outcome bright in vivid colors and super up close to your face, okay? Now, this might be kind of hard for you. Visualization is a new concept for some people, and that's okay, But the thing is, is that you're using your visualization and your imagination all the time, whether you think you are or you don't think you are, because that enemy in your brain is beating you up constantly with negative imaginations, false imaginations, and false mental rehearsals, right, of false realities. And so we have to take those things captive, put them in the distance, and renew our mind with things that are true, lovely, and of good report, right? So we can practice choosing the thoughts and therefore the emotions and therefore the pictures that we want to choose. And why this is so important for things like on-stage question and interviews specifically is if your visualization is broken, 
then you are quite literally leaning on memorization only and the judges asking you questions quote unquote perfectly in the way that you have prepared and if anything is outside of that you're going to freak out because your brain is not ready to actually anticipate things it doesn't know how to how to draw drum up the correct pictures in the way that is formidable for what you needed in that moment and it only knows how to access via memorization and that keeps things at a head level and not a heart level, which is not good. Not good, no bueno, okay? We want to speak from a heart level from emotions because emotions drum up pictures. And when we have clear pictures of things, our answers are more succinct. They're more emotional. They're more emotionally driven where judges can actually connect with them. And you'll answer better overall every single time. So those are the four things I want you guys to practice, okay? Moving those pictures farther or closer to you and choosing new thoughts and new emotions. Give this a practice, maybe every day this week as you're working through some things. And feel free to let us know on Instagram or in the comments on YouTube how this went for you. Awesome, y'all. I'll talk to you soon. See you next week.